morning church welcome back to our av reach virtual online worship service this morning thank you for tuning in once again and and joining us at this time we have an awesome service in store for you this morning a service that's going to encourage you and allow you to draw closer to god and so at this time i'm going to start things off with a word of prayer and so please join me as i pray god and father in heaven we're so grateful for this opportunity to once again worship um, you, thank you, God, for allowing us to be able to have service in this way during this time. We pray, God, that our service is to your glory, to your honor, and to your fame, that you're pleased with our worship this morning. And we pray, God, that we can set all and everything aside that's been taking our attention uh, throughout this week, and we can just focus on you and your word at this time. Thank you again for the service. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I also want to welcome you to our virtual service this morning. Happy holiday. Yesterday was the 4th of July, and uh, we're uh, still having our Sunday uh, 
Virtual services will continue that possibly through the end of the year, but we're also having a service at the building and you're welcome to come. Uh, we're keeping our social distance and we have some tremendous precautions to keep everybody healthy and, and strong. Uh, we're still waiting on the city and the county for uh, uh, the go ahead with B Bingo. It's uh, in phase three and we haven't hit that, especially with the rise of uh, coronavirus uh, patients. That may be a little while, but uh, we hope that uh, we can get that started again. And we're even looking into a drive-up uh, bingo, and that will even protect our uh, workers as well as our patrons. And so be praying about that, if you will. Our special contribution has been tremendous. We've been going two weeks, and we're already at uh, over 50000 50384 and I think that's even gone up a few thousand dollars uh, since uh, I got the last report. And so it's so encouraging, brothers and sisters, that uh, you're giving. And we pray that here in the month of July we can reach our goal. Thank you for giving. I know that uh, many of us are spreading out our uh, contribution in, a, in installments. And uh, uh, yet uh, it's really a necessary uh, uh, contribution for the churches that receive it. And so may God bless you for your generosity. Thank you so very much for that. We also have some uh, fundraisers that can help with the, the special contribution. Uh, our walkathon is at July 11th from 7 till about noon, 7 in the morning. And uh, we'll be walking from the building to George Lane Park. There'll be uh, water along the way, cold water. And, uh, but uh, the sooner you can get out there, the better, especially uh, we know what it's like here in the summer in the Antelope Valley, as well as uh, uh, we're having our uh, uh, fundraiser at Minchie's uh, from two in the afternoon till eight in the evening. And I'm so grateful for this business. It'll be on the 18th and uh, they're giving us a percentage of their uh, profits that uh, day. And so we're really grateful we can partner with the Minchies, a great uh, frozen yogurt place. And so uh, welcome to our service. And I hope that uh, you're filled and encouraged with by God's spirit and that uh, the word of God uh, produces faith in all of us this morning. God bless. The shadow of your wings till nature passes by in the shadow of your wings I cry out to you most high have mercy on me I need protection send help to rescue Lions roaring, the spears and swords bring my spirit to my knees in the shadow of your wings until the passes by in the shadow of your wings I cry out to you most high be it so
sing your praises among the nations. Your love is faithful, God, in the shadow of your wings. Till danger passes by, in the shadow of your wings, I cry out. Morning, church. Morning once again. It's time in our service to take communion together. And so please join me in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. That's where we uh, we get our thoughts from this morning. And uh, before we read it, I'll say one of the most repeated commands in the scripture is the command to remember. Uh, this is a theme. and This is a word that's written all over uh, the Bible, in both Old and New Testaments. The Bible says, remember the Lord your God. Remember the word of God. Remember his covenant forever. Remember who you are in Christ. Remember who you were before Christ. And this word remember is brought up over 200 times in the scriptures. Because remembering is a discipline that add, adds much reward to your life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23, the Bible says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is in the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so here the Bible says that communion is a call for us to remember the sacrifice of Jesus and what Jesus has done for us on the cross. And when we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, we're going to stay connected to his grace. We're going to stay connected to his love. We'll be connected to our faith and we'll remain connected to God. And so remembering the sacrifice of Jesus, it sustains our connection to God and our faith. And this is what we have the opportunity to participate in this, mo this morning, a moment that will help us sustain our relationship with God. And so let's pray. God and Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this opportunity to take communion. Help us at this time really to focus and to remember what Jesus has done for us. God, we're so grateful for it. And in a lot of our conversations, we, we express our gratitude for Jesus and his work on the cross. And and God, we pray this morning that we can focus on that gratitude and we can re really remember what Jesus has done for us. So thank you again for this time. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
All right, church, it's time to take contribution together. Uh, the Bible in Mark chapter 12 in verse 41 uh, to verse 44, the Bible says, And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put, put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called out to his disciples and he said to them, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all of those who were contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. And church, this is a famous story, one we've heard many different times. And in it, this woman, she has this heart that I believe we all should strive to imitate. And this is the heart that Jesus calls us to imitate. As he calls our attention to this woman and the heart that she had. And, and the heart she had was to be faithful in her giving. Even if that meant giving all that she had left to live on. And so church, let's remember to have this heart. This heart that's faithful to God in our contribution in spite of what the circumstances surrounding us may be. And so let's have this heart today to be faithful to our contribution. And let's have this heart always to remain faithful to God in this way. And again, at this time, you can text your contribution. You can text AV Church to 77977 and you can follow the prompts. You can also send a check in the mail to the church, write it out and direct it to AV Church. The address is here for you on the screen. And you can also go to the website and you can go to the Give tab and you can follow the instructions there. And so let's pray this morning for our contribution. God, thank you for being a God that gives to us uh, enriching in just generous ways. God, we pray that we can give back to you in return this morning and we can have the heart that this woman has to, to be faithful in our giving. God, we know that there's challenges in our lives right now and in our world right now, but we pray that we can focus to on you and remain faithful um, to this call that you have given us to contribute to the church. Thank you, God, for blessing our contribution this morning. May it be to your glory and your fame. In your son's name we pray. Amen. At this point in Jesus' life, he's in the middle of his ministry time. 
He's been performing many miracles. He's healing the sick. He's casting out demons, and people are following him. They're coming from all over the place, waiting to see what is the next thing he's going to do. And in this passage of the scripture, we read that he's passing through Jericho. And there's a huge crowd who are following him. And in this town, there was a wealthy man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector. As the chief tax collector, he had the authority and the power to walk up to you and tax you right on the spot in the middle of the street. But this man was with a disadvantage, a disability that caused him to be drastically shorter than other people. So this man, Zacchaeus, he hears of this, this guy, Jesus. He hears this man is passing through. He feels inside that, man, I, I'm still missing something. I got to go meet this guy. Only he can give me the answer that I'm searching for. He hears this man passing through, and it moved him to find his way to his breakthrough. And I just want to tell someone, you may have come in here broken, you may have come in here full of pain, you may have come in here afflicted, but you have a reason to start thinking about some possibilities, you have a reason to get excited, because that man, Jesus, is passing through, and if you're sick, you have a reason to get excited, because your healer is passing through here today. If you're in need, you have a reason to worship, because your provider is passing through here today. If you've been saved, if you've been delivered, you've been set free, you can give God your your best praise because your king, your savior, your deliverer is passing through here today. Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. We're continuing our gospel grace series. I have a deep conviction that uh, grace is what needs to be filling our hearts at this time with all the unrest, with the uh, the pandemic continuing to uh, hinder our lives as well as the social justice unrest. We really need to be uh, filled with love, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with concern and care and love for our fellow man. And so uh, I pray that this series continues to help us. It's been helping my heart in preparation. It helps me to stay centered spiritually and to be able to handle the challenges that I face every day. And I know all of us are facing some tremendous challenges right now. The social unrest has brought out a lot of emotion and feeling, especially for those that have suffered injustice in their life and they have suffered injustice for generations in their family. And so may uh, this sermon encourage all of you and may also those of you that are going through financial hardship, a lot of people have lost their jobs. A lot of jobs are being threatened right now. And we need to just be able to feel God's love and understand his concern and care for us and believe that things will work together for good for those that love him. And I believe that with all my heart. Today, we're going to look at God's grace towards Zacchaeus, a greedy man. The title of the sermon today is Grace to the Greedy. And so let's begin reading in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 and 2, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, so he went through Jericho with no intention of stopping. But a lost, wealthy, probably corrupt man named Zacchaeus lived in Jericho. And this uh, story tells us from Romans chapter 2, verse 11, God shows no favoritism. And grace is for everyone. Grace is for the greedy. Grace is for this ch chief tax collector that extorted money from everybody, from those that had money and from those that didn't have money. And I know it's a temptation to compare ourselves with people that have so much more materially and so much more money. And sometimes they've received that or gained that wealth in unscrupulous ways. And the tax collectors of the first century were unscrupulous people. We saw Matthew last week, but there's a twist to it with Zacchaeus. He wasn't just a tax collector. He was a chief tax collector. He had other tax collectors working under him. He took a, a, a percentage of what they collected. So all along the, the hierarchy here, different uh, people were taking advantage of one another and taking money that really didn't belong to them. And so we see grace to the greedy. Picking back up at verse 3 and 4, chapter 19 of Luke, he wanted to see who Jesus was, 
because he was short. He could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Now, all of us probably have something about our stature, our physical appearance that we'd like to be different. I'd like to be one inch taller. I'm 5'11". I have really wanted to be six. It doesn't really make that big a difference in my life. And yet, it just sounds taller. It sounds a lot taller. And most of the people in the ancient world, the average height of a man was around five feet. And so if Zacchaeus was less than five feet, he was very short, even by those standards. And so by our standards today, he would be very, very short. But what's very interesting is he humbled himself to climb a tree. He, it says Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus so badly that he humbled himself as a grown man to climb a tree to view Jesus. My question for you this morning is what trees will you climb to be able to see Jesus? What trees will you climb for Jesus' sake? God responds in love to anyone who seeks him fervently. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. It says that three times in the scriptures. In 1 Peter 5.5 5, and Proverbs 13.34 and James 4.5, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Zacchaeus made a statement of humility. He showed his humility by climbing a tree. You know, I used to climb trees. A lot of us did when we were younger. but uh, you know, when I fell, when I was young, whether it was skiing or playing, I just bounced right back up. Now, I'm afraid if I fell, I wouldn't bounce, I'd break. And so for a grown man to climb a tree in front of the, the town at a parade to see a famous individual, famous rabbi, that was definitely an act of humility. We face decisions in our lives. Which way should we go? Zacchaeus, for whatever reason, was at a point of decision, a valley of decision in his life. And when he had the opportunity to see Jesus, he took it. And then we're going to see how he went and pursued Jesus. Listen to the story in verse 5. It says, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Jesus recognized the effort that Zacchaeus had put in to see him. So he requested hospitality. Providing hospitality in the ancient world was a significant deed. It showed a desire for fellowship, a desire for relationship. And uh, hospitality was only given to those who deemed deserving of fellowship. So Zacchaeus was willing to welcome Jesus, and that was the right response. Jesus displays an extension of grace to a chief tax collector who probably extorted people to become wealthy. Most tax collectors were known for their lack of integrity and their, their injustice. And so Christ is showing that even a fraudulent materialist can be invited into his fellowship and receive God's grace. Grace is for everybody. In Luke 19 and verse 6, it says, So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Zacchaeus was so eager to extend this hospitality to Jesus that he models the response of a lonely man desiring grace, desiring relationships. God's grace fills the emptiness in our lives. If you feel any emptiness, and the pandemic and being isolated has brought that out in many of us. We've had time for reflection. We've had time to look at our lives and think about what, what is the purpose? What's the meaning? What are we living for? What's it all about? And those are good questions. They're good questions to ask, but you need solid answers. And Zacchaeus had probably felt alienated. We alienate people because of our sin. So many relationships are strange due to money and the lust for money. People can be hurt along the way as we climb the ladder of success, but the top of the ladder can be a very lonely, lonely place. 
Welcoming God into our lives brings the blessing of grace. Zacchaeus immediately obeyed Jesus' request to go to his house. He's showing a desire to change. This is the right time in Zacchaeus' life. Look at verse 7. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. The same thing they said when Jesus called Matthew. The same thing they said when uh, Jesus called Mary. Jesus came to save sinners. The purpose of Christ's life was to give grace generously. Many of us think God's stingy, that God is not generous, that he's not rich in mercy, that he's not eager to save, but he is. And that's why we need this series. You need to hear some of these things over and over every week until we really get it. We move it from our head to our heart and we really understand how much God loves and adores us. It's like that first child when they're born and and your just heart goes out to them. And then every child after that, your heart goes out to them. And then grandchildren, your heart and your love just flows out when they're born. That's how God feels about every one of us. He created us and he loves us and he's generous with his grace. The world does not understand God's grace. And even religious people can be self-righteous and stingy with grace. But God is generous in grace and mercy. Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he has lavished on us. Good stuff. So encouraging this morning. Let me remind you of some other encouraging passages. John 3 And verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God is not quick to punish, but rather eager to save. Jesus was not sent to condemn the world, but to save creation by the grace of God. Ephesians 2, 4 through 8, but because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you've been saved. Only mercy and grace saves our soul. Zacchaeus knew that implicitly, internally, instinctively. He knew he had plenty of money, but he was empty. He was lost inside. You can't buy love. Material things don't fill you. Only the love and the grace And the Spirit of God fills the emptiness of our souls. We're spiritual people. We have God's breath in us. We have God's Spirit in us. We have a void that's spiritual that's got to be filled. People try to fill that spiritual void in all different kinds of ways. But there's only one way that fits. And that's the grace and mercy of God. It it says in... uh, 2 Peter 3 and verse 8. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but that everyone would come to repentance. Zacchaeus repented without being challenged by Jesus. The grace of God melts our hearts. James 2 and verse 13. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who is not merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. How did Zacchaeus repent? Luke 19 and verse 8 says, but Jesus, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. Zacchaeus responded to the invitation of Jesus' fellowship by repenting of his sins. Christ's expression of grace motivated Zacchaeus to make restitution for those he cheated and he had extorted, so he sacrificed for the poor. I can always tell a soft, good heart, somebody that the word of God has really touched, somebody that has felt the grace of God because they don't just repent. They want to make restitution. They want to make things right. They want to resolve their conflicts. They want to 
to change their reputation, change their life so radically. They want to get rid of even those things that are weighing them down and will keep them back from following Jesus completely. And so they lessen the load. They turn things around to such a degree that everyone sees the impact of the grace of God in their life. People that you have to challenge and say, you know, are you going to change this? Don't you think you ought to change this? Have you reconciled with this person? And they're dragging their feet and they're hesitant and they don't want those kind of assignments. They haven't been touched by the grace of God. They may know what's right to do, but they don't really want to do it. It says in response to this, in Luke chapter 19, verse 9, Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house. He's given him grace. He's anointing him with a blessing of salvation. He's calling down a right relationship, righteousness upon Zacchaeus, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. Jesus pronounced Zacchaeus pardon for his sin due to his confession of sin and commitment to make restitution. We've got to have both of those in our lives. Grace is free to those who decide to do the right thing. Jesus gave uh, grace, let's call him Zach. We're on a personal basis now because he's been saved. Despite the questioning of the crowd regarding Christ uh, seeking fellowship with a sinful businessman, Jesus gave him grace despite popular opinion. The ministry of Jesus screams mercy to sinners producing a movement based on love and not legalism. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Brothers and sisters, what our world needs so badly right now is mercy to triumph over judgment and for grace to even triumph over justice. If we'd be more gracious to one another, if we'd be more loving, if, if we'd extend mercy and not even expect people to live up to the exact measure of the law, but extend a little bit of mercy. May the judges in our land extend some mercy. May the law enforcement officers extend some mercy. May things not be so cold and hard and calloused. May there be grace flowing between one another to heal our land. In Luke 19 and verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The purpose of Jesus is our purpose. Whether it's pandemics are going on, whether riots are going on, whether peace is in our land, our purpose is to seek and to save the lost. Jesus sought out Zacchaeus to save his soul. God is active in reaching out into our lives to extend his love. The story of Zacchaeus illustrates the theology of grace describing a God who initiates with us, asks to come into our house, knocks at our door to have fellowship with us. God loves us first and completely while we were still sinners. I love this verse in Romans chapter 5, 6 through 8. You see it just the right time when we were still powerless. Christ died for the ungodly. Very, very Rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I was a hard sinner in the world, hard-hearted. Circumstances of my childhood, circumstances of my choices as a teenager, as a young man, had hardened my heart and calloused my conscience. I didn't feel bad about things. I didn't feel bad when I should have felt terrible about things that I was doing, ways that I was hurting and abusing other people. But what melted this hard heart, what will melt every hard heart, is the love, the grace, and the mercy of God. I remember the day that I walked out of a bar in Golden, Colorado, late at night one weekend. And I was a freshman in college. And nobody said anything. I was with some other ball players. We were blowing off steam after another lost football game. 
And I felt deep in my soul lost. I felt like what Zacchaeus felt when he was motivated to climb that tree to see if there was hope in his life, to look out from those leaves in that branch, to see if there was grace for him, or whether he had sinned too much, he had hurt too many people, abused too many, robbed too many, taken too much from the poor, whether his greed had sacrificed his eternity. And that one act produced a domino effect that brought him to salvation and even brought a blessing on everybody he had taken from. Can you imagine Zacchaeus showing up at your house, knocking on the door? You don't want to open the door. You think he wants more taxes and he instead gives you funds, gives you back your taxes four times what he had overcharged. That was a blessed day for a lot of people, not just for Zacchaeus. When one sinner repents, the angels in heaven re re rejoice because there's a domino effect when we change our lives, when the grace of God has impacted us. The whole world is improved when we receive grace. What do we learn this morning? Grace produces repentance and restitution. Duty might produce repentance. Knowledge might produce repentance, but only grace produces repentance and restitution. Grace reaches the empty, lonely, wealthy, rich, greedy person. Grace seeks sinners to extend love and hospitality and fellowship. Grace overcomes prejudice and racism in any form. The religious people look down on Zacchaeus, partly because he was short. <laughs> Sorry for the pun there, but also mainly because of his actions, because of his unrighteousness. Grace overcomes whatever prejudice, whatever racism, in any form. Grace melts the hard, cold heart of the greedy. And so much greed is based on a hardness and a callousness, a, a coldness of heart. Grace reveals a God of abundance, patience, rich in mercy, overflowing with grace for our lives. And grace, unfortunately, is denied by legalistic, judgmental, hard-hearted people. The lesson is yours this morning. The word again this week is grace. The word is God's love. The word is Christ incarnate in our life, just demonstrating God's concern and care for the world. God loves us all, and he'll sustain us through this. Keep your faith. Stay strong. Stay in prayer. Keep a soft heart. Do what's right, always. Repent when you need to make restitution and reconcile as you should. And the God of all goodness will bless your life. Amen. the son of thy love for jesus who died and has now gone above we praise thee O god for a spirit of light who has shown us our savior and scattered our
time.